in the in the navy or, or the military if you're a bad leader like that person has to come in every single day like they have no no opportunity to lead um in the civilian world if they don't want boss they go find a new job and and that's statistically why most people leave their jobs they don't like the culture they don't like their boss very rarely is it going to make you know more money um and you know so i i think i unlearning that um, it's not not necessarily treating people with decency and, and respect because that that should be in the military as well. But understanding that this is now a two sided equation because um, it's not two sided in the military. Um, you know, there's there's a bunch of other other things you, you certainly have to unlearn in, in scaling and growing uh, growing a business. But um, it's just it's interesting that you keyed in on that because you know leadership. Um, and, and fostering a, a culture that inspires and brings people around the common vision is, is one of the most important things you can do. Welcome to Grow Think Tank. This is the one and only place where you will get insight from the founders and the CEOs of the fastest growing privately held companies. I am the host. My name is Gene Hammett. I help leaders and their teams navigate the defining moments of their growth. Are you ready to grow? Leadership is about constant and evolution. When you evolve as a leader, you can create an uh, opportunity to meet new challenges, hire the right people, build the right team, and continue your journey of leadership. But here's the reality. It's hard. There's a lot of things pull you in different directions, a lot of uh, meetings, a lot of emails that you get that keep you from evolving the way you want to. I know I felt that way when I ran a business up to about five or six million, and I felt like I was doing the right things, but something kept getting in the way. I was afraid to ask for help. Well, when you think of tuning into this podcast, I want you to look at this as a chance to look at what others have done and what they've had to uh, unlearn, if you will. In fact, today we're going to talk about unlearning leadership. That is with Ryan Hogan, uh, the founder of Hunt a Killer. They're one of the Inc. 5000 companies that have grown really fast. They're, gonna, they're still on a trajectory to grow this year beyond belief. But when I share with you some of the insights behind what did he need to unlearn as a leader of you know, something that he took from the military to bring into civilian life, you will be able to see exactly what you could do next if you want to continue your evolution as a leader. One of the other things we talked about was, you know, the importance of hiring the right people. What are the key elements of that? And so when you tune into this episode, you will learn a lot of different things to take your leadership to the next level. When I say evolving as a leader, hopefully you think of, of a plan that you're creating. Hopefully you know the skills that you're adding on. So you know exactly what you could do. If you don't know exactly what skills you're adding, what your plan for that is, then I'd like to offer you something really interesting. You have a chance to sit down with me, have a conversation about your business, about your leadership and about your growth. And it's absolutely free. I want to meet my audience. And if you are got a team of 10 people or more, then you can go to my website, genehammett.com and go to start your journey. That will be a chance for you to learn how to put together the plan, identify the skills and really get clear about how you're evolving as a leader. Just go to genehammett.com and click on start your journey. Now here's the interview with Ryan. Ryan, how are you? Good. How are you, Gene? Fantastic. We're having a great uh, episode here for Growth Think Tank about leadership and culture of fast growth companies. So tell us about Honda Killer. Yeah, so Hunt and Killer today is an um, immersive subscription experience where we deliver physical items to your door each month. So each month you receive clues and items and correspondence and and it immerses you in this universe that, uh, that we have created. Well, your business model subscription, so you have lots of, of users and you've grown really fast. Um, what, what's been the key there? Uh, so there's 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 been quite a few keys for for sure. You know, one is is performance marketing has, has certainly been in our our favor over the past few years. You know, we have really found ways to unlock um, you know digital advertising. So things like Facebook and YouTube and other platforms where we can go out and spend a few bucks um, and, and get a few more bucks back. Um, and so that that's really been kind of the driver of of the top line growth, but the driver of the business growth has really come back to the members and our feedback loop process. So really starting to focus on listening and and curating these communities around our brand, um, which gives us the ability to to not only pivot and iterate the experiences as we continue to develop, um, but also provide that that community for members to be able to come back to and and find a whole bunch of people that you know are are like minded and having similar conversations. And Ryan, you come from uh, a 
real military background. Tell us a little bit about that. You spent almost 20 years in the Navy? Almost 20 years. Yeah, 20 years in uh, in a couple of years. So um, I, I enlisted back in November of 2002. Um, I was a, an enlisted air crewman, so I flew on helicopters and did a whole bunch of cool stuff um, as far as mine countermeasures. Um, and then transitioned from that into test and development on helicopters. Um, ultimately got a, a commissioning in the Navy and, um, and put on uh, the rank of ensign, moved out to San Diego and, and drove ship out four years. Uh, but that's when I, I, that's when I was also in the middle of, of Hunt the Killer and Hunt the Killer was in the middle of taking off. So like Hunt the Killer provided an opportunity for me to, to follow my passions and my dreams um, and, and get off of, or get out of active duty and, uh, and join the reserves. Well, one of the things I've seen from a lot of leaders across the fast growth companies and even, even outside of that is coming back into leading a team of civilians is a little bit of an adjustment. You have to unlearn some things. What are some of the things that you had to unlearn to be the leader that you are today? Yeah, it's, it's really funny that you say that because I, I, I've got um, a, a mastermind that, that I lead and we've got a, a couple of vets in there and, um, and hearing about like just getting the job done and, and you know, how do I make these people do what, what I need them to do? And, and that's kind of the difference, right? The difference between the military and, and civilian is people have the ability to walk away. In the, in the Navy or, or the military, if you're a bad leader, like that person has to come in every single day. Like they have no, no opportunity to leave. Um, in the civilian world, if they don't wear boss, they go find a new job. And, and that's statistically why most people leave their jobs. They don't like the culture. They don't like their boss. Very rarely is it going to make you know, more money. Um, and you know, so I, I think I, unlearning that, um, and not, not necessarily treating people with decency and, and respect because that, that should be in the military as well, but understanding that this is now a two-sided equation because um, it's not two-sided in the military. Um, you know, there, there's a bunch of other, other things you, you certainly have to unlearn in, in scaling and growing, uh, growing a business. But um, it's just, it's interesting that you keyed in on that because, you know, leadership um, and, and fostering a, a culture that inspires and brings people around the common vision is, is one of the most important things you can do. Ryan just talked about two-sided leadership. What he means here is that it takes two people to lead. It takes two sides. It takes you know, a yin and a yang, because you can't lead without others. When you think about your leadership, are you treating your employees in a way that they are seeing this as two-sided, that you're asking them to take ownership of this and they're accepting that ownership? When you actually understand that it's not just one way, meaning you tell them no, that it's a two-way relationship, the dialogue between you two can change. Now, I mentioned this to you because obviously you know that you've got two people involved but are you truly treating it as a two-way relationship or are you treating it one way? Back to Ryan. Well, it's very much a common uh, across so many of the episodes we've done here with other founders and CEOs. When you think about your journey as a leadership um, and where you are right now, what is one thing specifically that you had to maybe learn the hard way? Uh, become a human. You know, I, I think uh, for the, the first 10 years of my enlisted career, um, there is a, and still to this day, there is a, a very, um, clear distinction between officer and enlisted, um, and different branches have have different um, different widths of that those lines. Um, but in the Navy, like the officers eat in the wardroom, and the enlisted eat in the chow hall or on the mess deck. And there's this separation. And my discovery as a young enlisted sailor was always like, oh my gosh, they do no wrong, and they're always professional, and and like they've got all their their um, crap squared away. Um, which is interesting because then when I became an officer, I realized it's just as much of a uh, debacle on the other end that it is on on either side. Um, but that was one of the the things that I took with me through my first company um, or the first company that actually got off the ground um, and ultimately failed. And like I, I always thought I had to have this persona, not not a persona of like, hey, look at me, I'm I'm important, but a persona of like, I am not human. I am I am what you believe me to be. Um, you know, there is a clear distinction between you and I, um, and it, it didn't work. It, it didn't foster a culture of, of um, inspiration. Apologies for that. It's the dog um, that didn't foster a, a culture of, of didn't inspire anybody. And so one of the things with this second go round was really starting to focus on um, just being real, like, you know, talking to people. I, I, I don't have to wear the clothes that 
that people, I'm not supposed to wear a suit and, and fancy shoes. Like it's really just about being human and being who you are. I pick up on some words sometimes. It's part of the coach in me. Uh, you've said the word inspire a few times here. Why is that word so important to you? Because uh, that's how work gets done. Like we we have passion and inspired about what we're doing. I, like if, if you're working for a paycheck, like most people do in the military, or a lot of people do in the military, you know, are you giving it your best effort? Are you going above and beyond? Like when people are, are inspired and passionate um, and committed to whatever the vision is of the company, they will solve problems on their own and it takes less direction. And that's that's been the key to our success at this point is, is really about hiring the right folks and getting out of their way. Well, if you don't hire the right folks or if those folks aren't inspired, you get out of, get out of their way, they don't know what to do. Um, but if you hire folks that already understand what needs to be done, typically they're the ones telling you what to do um, or what the company should be doing differently. And that's really where you start to see organizational change. But that stuff doesn't happen if people are not not passionate um, or don't believe in the vision of the organization. You're speaking some of the language that I talk about all the time with my clients uh, that want to excel and create a culture of ownership. Is that something you think about creating, creating a, a sense of ownership or feeling of ownership across the company? Yes, absolutely. And ownership is, is important. I saw a great quote um, a, a couple months ago, and it was, how can we expect people to act like owners if they aren't owners? And so I think ownership as a foundation actually starts with um, an equity incentive programs. And so, you know, if, if we're just paying a check, like, is there real ownership if there's no vested interest in the success of the organization? So I think it starts with that. And that's just kind of table stakes, the foundation. Um, and from there it grows. And that's not to say that like whatever strategy you have is going to be perfect because our organization has hit these inflection points time and time again, where things change. Um, and you know, all day long, you can say, hey, if you see something, fix it. Or if you see something, do something. And that's really been our motto lately. Um, but the minute you have a new team or a new department and they are taking over responsibilities that you used to have, it's not malicious. It's just human nature that when you see a problem, you're like, oh, there's a team for that. They got it. Um, and and it, it starts to kind of break down that 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 ownership and that accountability and, and put these stovepipes in place. And, and so we focus a lot of our energy today um, on, breaking, uh, on breaking those types of things down so that we're just finding problems and we're, we're coming up with great solutions. I'm not sure if you caught that, but Ryan just talked about ownership and the need for equity programs. Very powerful way to create ownership is by giving them actual equity. And that is one way to create that feeling of ownership. But I've been studying fast growth companies and you don't have to actually give up equity. This is one place where Ryan and I might disagree on this, but you can actually create leadership that inspires people to feel like owners without equity. You can give them a place where they feel like they're growing, where the, the time there is aligned not only for their growth, but the company growth. They can feel truly connected. They feel transparent and open. They feel a part of the, the mission, the vision of the company, and all that can happen if you have the right things in place and you don't need equity. That's just my two cents, but hopefully you will find your path to creating a culture of ownership because that's what I think is important if you want your company to grow. Back to Ryan. I want to take you back to something you said, Ryan, about hiring the right people. Uh, you know, it's, it's always been a tough job market. It's really tough to find the most talented people to grow the business. When you say hire the right people, what, what are the kind of things you're looking for? Uh, or what's that process look like for you that, that makes that possible? Yeah. So the, the first thing, and it, I, I think we've got a pretty good process that, that I'm, I'm confident in, and it takes a long time. And we, we have some, we took some pages from the book of um, who. Um, and so like the, the first thing we do is a phone screening. Second is the who interview. Third is um, the focused interview. And all of these have, have um, different objectives. And, and once someone gets through our process, they have not only been tested for like what, what it has their experience brought to life that, that they can bring from a value standpoint to the organization, but also that culture ad we're looking for. So, so will they fit? Do they understand the, the values at Hunt the Killer? Like what we hold near and dear, who we are, um, and will they be a good value add um, for, uh, for those values? Um, so like those are some things, but one thing that, that has become crystal clear and through some of my most recent um, senior leadership team hiring is a is a clear, crystal clear understanding in not only who are you looking for, but what are you looking for? And all too often, you know, especially when you have a grow scaling organization, 
and it's just like, you know, HR or, or somebody, the hiring manager comes and or the, the re recruiting person comes and says like, hey, I need a job description. And you just go online, you Google the job description and you just copy and paste it into your own and you kick it back. Like that does nobody really any good. Um, there is something very specific that you need for your organization and it, it doesn't come from a template. And so we have spent a lot of time recently um, putting extra effort into job descriptions to clearly articulate not only what is this person going to do, but what does success look like in this role? And once we believe that we've got a crystal clear picture of that, then we go to market to start interviewing candidates because we've got a scorecard that we're looking at that we can use to grade the potential of the candidates that we're interviewing. I want to ask you a question. I don't know the answer. You may not even have an answer to this, but do you have a favorite interview question to find the right people? I, I don't. And like, listen, 10 years ago, we used to have the, hey, if, if you could be any food, what would you be? Or if you could be, if you could have one superhero power, what would that be? And what I've learned is that is that when you do a deep dive on someone's resume and the deep dive on the resume is, is okay, what did you do there? Great. Um, uh, what was your, what was your biggest win there? And you start really digging in on, on the value that they brought to that organization and the strategy and the thought process. Like that uncovers a lot more than just learning that someone wants to be invisible so they can, I don't know, walk to through a, a bank terminal. I, I don't, whatever they do with those superhero powers. So like, we really tend to not go into the crazy questions, but really into the, the fundamental questions to start to uncover um, what we believe they can bring to our organization. I can appreciate that. I've never been a big fan of the, the crazy questions either that, that Google <laughs> used to throw around. Ryan, I want to go back to this whole concept of leadership. You've obviously had some, some ups and downs in business. Um, what's a mistake that you can look back and say, you know, that was something that was hard for me to, to learn and evolve from, but I'm glad I went through it. Yeah. And we, we touched on the, the, the hiring. And so I, I'll leave that one out for now, because I think that there's nothing more important than hiring the right people into the right roles um, and, and getting the job done. Um, outside of that, it, it's really starting to under, understand the fundamentals of the business. And so, you know, the collapse of Run For Your Lives, what that really taught me is that you need to know your numbers and you need to understand what those key metrics are that drive your business. Um, this year, we implemented a system called the Entrepreneurial Operating System, EOS, um, and we have been super disciplined in not only our articulating what our five-year target is, breaking that down into three-year goal, breaking that down into the one-year goal, and then really starting to look at what are our 90-day rocks to be able to achieve those goals that build up to that grand vision. Um, you know, but, but also using that as a system um, and a process to understand what are the key metrics or key drivers of the business. So every single, we come together as a senior leadership team, and we've got about 10 um, data points that we look at um, that are either red or green. It's either good or it's bad. And if it's good, great. And if it's bad, great. Like we've acknowledged it. And now let's drop it down for discussion and figure out how we can come together as a team um, to resolve whatever that issue may be. So um, that's been the, the biggest lesson learned. When you think about how you're continuing to evolve as a leader, what's the hardest part of your next version of yourself as a leader? Um, for me, it's it's really about, um, and, and this goes back to how quickly we're growing. It's what does the organization need from me? Um, and not just as a, as a leader, um, because, you know, I, I think, you know, understanding fundamentals uh, to me are, are understanding what obstructions and roadblocks exist and being able to remove them for um, for teammates, um, you know, um, actually caring about teammates and the future and trajectories and um, and things like that. And, and a lot of these things are are. are table stakes from a leadership standpoint. I think from a, a CEO slash leadership standpoint, the, the, the hardest thing for me is to constantly reevaluate what does the organization need from me? If you looked at my role four years ago, I was buying ads on Facebook while, um, you know, hiring a, a, an HR manager while, um, you know, answering customer support questions. Um, today, 30 to 40% of my time is spent in recruiting. So, you know, it, for me, the, the biggest challenge as we continue to grow is understanding where does my focus need to be and um, and where do I provide the most value to the organization? Well, I can appreciate that you're always evolving. I am too. My clients are. People listening in here are always evolving. So I appreciate you sharing your journey with us here on the podcast. Yeah, thank you so much. Appreciate it. So this wraps up another episode of Grow Think Tank, where we talked to leaders like Ryan, who are really pushing the boundaries of their own leadership. They're unlearning some of the things that maybe they can't carry forward in this next version of themselves. And we create content for you because you want to be a visionary leader. You want to create the kind of impact in the business. You want to hire the right people, build the right team. 
you want to talk about um, ways that we do that through coaching, make sure you check out genehammett.com. As always, lead with courage. We'll see you next time.